Okay, this is not a step-by-step. -step. This is basically just to show you guys where the wires go for the motors. I went on about other stuff as well, but my main goal was just to show the wiring for the motors as most step-by-steps, or actually all step-by-steps, seem to leave that important step out. Um, my original APM was 252 version 5. I got a new one. It's the APM 2.8. Uh, I got it off eBay. It comes with an EO 6M GPS with external compass and a 5 volt, th 5 volt 3 amp power module. One of the main first steps you're going to want to do before installing the APM is with your old one, plug in your USB cable, go to Mission Planner, and download your parameters. After you install the new APM 2.8, you can simply upload your old parameters and it'll have all your motor settings and all that. Also, some people say go into Mission Planner and calibrate your new APM board. I find that 100% pointless because it's very unlikely you're going to install it after exactly level and exactly how you did it without it being in the shell. So I'd skip that test. However, you can plug it in with the USB cable to make sure your GPS works and your compass works. Um, I believe that's it, so I hope this video is helpful. Before I take off this case completely, I'll just show you how I have the wires hooked up. The GPS and the compass wire go there. I'll just take these off. All of the step-by-steps tell you to put the compass here and the GPS there. However, on this unit here, at least was version 3.21 and 3.15, I'm sure it'll be the same for 3.12, the compass actually goes here. You, and if it doesn't work, like first you can try it here like everybody else says, and if you get nothing in Mission Planner, just try switching the blue and the white cable to this port here instead, and uh, it should work. So I'm just going to show you guys quickly the wiring. I'm not going to get into too much detail. I just noticed a lot of uh, other step-by-steps that are actually done really good. They just kind of skip over the part where the wires actually go to. So I'll move back a bit, tell you where the wires, the motors are. So basically it goes, move back a bit, one, two, three, and four. So here's the uh, TX, or the remote, uh, module. Everybody basically also says to uh, mark your wires, but I really don't think you have to. You can unplug all the wires from your old APM. And what you'll want to do now is most likely use one of the wires that's included with the kit because it's just a little bit longer. And the way this wire goes here is the orange is the switch wire, the red is the positive, and the brown is the ground. So basically this wire here gets powered by this APM. And then on the APM, you'll notice that at the top, it's kind of hard to see because all the wires are still plugged in. The whole top row here is all yellow. So that's all your switch. So it goes switch, positive, and then ground. So again, the so orange would be now, would be your, um, switch the red is positive and the brown is ground okay so now the wiring well we'll jump to the motors first i guess so on the output on your apm it goes one two three four and it seems on the old one it actually goes eight seven six five but whatever so you'll want to unclip all your wires to make a rat nest it'll be easier to work with so if you follow this wire here on port one of the output, it should go to the motor on the right side with your quadcopter facing forward. Number two, if you follow it, should go to the one back left side. Number three, should go to the left side. And the fourth output should go to the motor in the back. So again, it's one, I'm going off the numbers off the APM by the way. It's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So one would be here, two would be this one, three would be this one, and four 
would be this for this motor. All right. Okay, now we'll get on to this guy here. So basically I just told you before that it's the switch wire first, positive and then ground. So the first one, we'll just go by the letters so it's easier. So A goes over here to number one, the number one switch wire. The next one would be E, T, and R. So using the same cable that came with it, you don't actually have to unplug it from here. Just switch it around and put it for two, three, and four. And then the next one goes black, red, white. And it's actually sideways on this one, which if you didn't touch it, it would have came like this anyways. So then it goes for five, six, and seven. And that is for your switches for like return to home. The next one is um, a white one all by itself. That's for the gimbal switch one or switch two. And then the next one is a white and red one. That's for power for five, five volts and a switch for a gimbal two, I believe, switch two. And then you're left with one wire over here off the main board that you don't want to hook up if you got the power module. Most likely if you get the same kit as I did, you'll get the power module. It's handy because now in the uh, telemetry in Mission Planner or on your phone, you'll be able to get voltage measurements and stuff like that. And uh, basically that's just the cable that plugs here. All right. Um, the USB cables, you could take this whole board off if you wanted to and then do a direct solder, but I was lazy. So all I did was cut the wires, heat shrink wires on to extend the USB cable to this side. And uh, what else is there? Also for the power module, you'll want to probably, if you figure out how to run the power module wire, which is quite long and it's pretty stiff, You'll probably want to duct tape, or not duct tape, electrical tape up this wire really good. Because I've noticed that at the end of these, the wires sometimes uh, poke out. And it can potentially short out on your board right there. So for now, I just taped some uh, electrical tape around a piece of paper. Just to give it some more, just in case it vibrates and starts scratching through. Same with the, ape, with the power module. Not sure if I can get any light down there. Well, it's down there anyways. I electrical taped the wires on both sides and electrical taped some wire there or some uh, electrical tape over the power module in case it shorts out on this board here. Uh, the light is a hit and go, it seems. Um, I got, I updated this uh, APM to version 3.21 and the way I ran the wires is... Uh, I just took out the negative wire out of the harness for the, the lights. Uh, it's zero, one, two, three, four, starting at five now. So it's five, six, and seven. And right across from seven, I put the ground. With this setup with 3.21, it actually, when the satellite locks, the green light goes solid. And when you bind the remote with the quadcopter, it goes solid. Um, I noticed on 3.15 it doesn't. The green light just keeps blinking, but I really don't care about that right now. I'm just going to probably upgrade back to 3.21. I just wanted to see how it would fly with 3.15 and what would happen. And I'm sure if you play around with the wires or do somebody's mod, you could probably get the lights working with 3.15. I believe that's it. I tried to make this video quick this time, so I didn't go on. Um... What else is there? I'm just going to jump back in this video probably. All right, I forgot to bring up the jumpers. If you have the Neo 6M with the built-on compass, you'll want to remove the jumper here. Um, if you don't have a power module, you won't have this cable plugged in here most likely because you don't have it. And you'll want to have this cable plugged in to your remote. So again, in case you unplugged it, it goes in, uh, see if I can do it one-handed, doubt it, I'm not lucky. All right, I did it. So it goes switch, positive, negative. Again, if you do have the power module, just, it's really important that you unplug this wire and tape it up and tuck it away. Okay, this time I believe that's it. Thanks for watching.